Okay, Rob, we have a question about dairy, in particular cream. Uh, beyond the full fat, grass fed, organic, non GMO, non homogenized beautifulness, but more specifically about the hormonal properties and health implications. Oh, man. Um, cream's awesome, tastes great, it, it's very calorically dense. Uh, we've seen a lot of people get themselves in the deep end of the pool by just over consuming cream. Uh, they're having, you know, the goal is a low carb or ketogenic diet for fat loss and body composition. Uh, the person's struggling, we get in, poke around, look at their meal plan, and they're doing like a quarter cup of cream four or five times, you know, throughout the day, put it, putting some coffee in it. Um, there are some cool elements to uh, grass-fed butter and cream. There is some uh, vitamin K in it, a little bit of carotenoids, but at the end of the day, it's just a really dense calorie source and you don't really get anything else. There's not any vitamins or not many vitamins, not much in the way of minerals. So um, are there any problems like hormonally, like with IGF and stuff like that? Not really because the, the bulk of the driver from like IGF response around dairy is from the protein. And that's a whole interesting story. Pedro Bastos is an absolute expert in, in that scene. If folks don't follow him, they should definitely check him out. But uh, traditional cultures typically cultured their dairy. And by doing that, it modifies the proteins in such a way that you don't get as potent of uh, an IGF response. And even then, it, it's... um. It's all kind of context driven, like people freak out about that and they freak out about mTOR. But if you are overlaying elevated IGF levels, plus an overfed environment, plus poor sleep, plus a hyperinflammatory, you know, kind of response, then you, you, you've got problems. Um, I guess one of the, the common, you know, bugaboos around whole cream and butter in particular with regards to dairy is that there are some people, I happen to be one of these people, I have a FOXO mutation that the uh, saturated fat in general will drive up my lipoproteins. There's all kinds of pissing matches and contention around whether or not the elevated lipoproteins and cholesterol matters in the context of a low carb diet. And, and it's not entirely clear what the story is with that. But there's a reality that if I shift out butter and cream and I do more nuts and monounsaturated fats from like uh, uh, olive oil, my lipoproteins and cholesterol just plummet. Like it could be the difference between 1100 on the mono base deal or 2800 with regards to uh, LDLP count on the, uh, the higher saturated fat level. So, you know, the hormonal responses, I'm not really concerned about that on any level, good, good pickup on the IGF, but I am concerned about butter and, and cream from the caloric load, from the lack of uh, just kind of nutrient density and then also there are some people that definitely get an elevation in lipoproteins. And I suspect, again, that cholesterol lipoprotein story is going to be somewhat individual as to whether or not it increases cardiovascular disease risk. But it's one of those things to at least be aware of. And, uh, you know, you can make an informed decision then about what you're doing. And so if you're not one of these people that responds like you to, to, to uh, saturated fat, and if you're not doing a quarter cup three times a day, having a little splash in your coffee in the morning is not the end of the world. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, uh, uh, you know, little little bit of uh, portion control, no big deal. Yeah.